The media bay is not new. It's been a long-standing feature inside of Cubase. It's always been up in the media menu under media bay. And it's had its own place where we can find things like loops, presets, MIDI patterns, even down to things like our video files that we want to use inside of Cubase. In Cubase Pro 8.5, Seinberg have done something really special with the media bay. They've put it right in front of us. So you'll notice over in Racks, we've got the Media Bay tab with instruments, loops and samples, and more, which contains the thousands of presets inside of Cubase. So watch how easy it is to add an instrument. I'm gonna add the new Retrolog 2. I'm gonna click on a patch or double click on it, and it'll load up into my project. And now I can access it and listen to it. When we click on the instrument button, we can see all of the factory instruments and any other additional Steinberg instruments that we may have purchased. We can also see the factory and additional content packs, which you can purchase again from the Steinberg website. We don't need to have a MIDI input device or a MIDI controller to preview these presets within the media bay. We can use the memo recorder, or we can even just use our mouse to click on the QWERTY keyboard buttons in the media bay. Entering information with the mouse isn't really that much fun. So if you want to get a little bit more technical, you can go to the setting at the bottom right hand corner of the media bay and turn on the computer keyboard input. Now we can use our fingers and the keyboard in front of us to enter information and preview these different sounds and their presets in the media bay. We can basically preview a sound anywhere at any time. This is the instrument and the track preset that we're actually previewing here. So this will contain any inserts and EQs that are part of the makeup of the sound. The new memo recorder is a really welcome addition to the media bay. We can record a very short MIDI passage and use that MIDI passage to preview any of the patches inside of the media bay. Clicking on the loops and sample buttons will bring up the factory and also additional content which you can purchase on the Steinberg website. We can scroll through and select any genre we want. I'm going to select hip hop and now I can just start previewing different beats by clicking on it. It's pretty easy. Now my project tempo is 120, so at the moment these beats are all being played at different tempos, which kind of makes it hard to match it and move it over into our project. But down on the bottom right hand corner of the media bay, you can select align to projects. Now the media bay is going to start time stretching so that this fits in exactly with our project tempo. We can also select wait for project play, which means when I hit play, the beats are going to start playing, or whatever is selected in the media bay. Now if I had information in my project, whatever I select in the media bay would be playing over the top of my project, so I can preview it with the material that I'm working on. The media bay contains a number of different file formats, and we can control what we want to see, or we can filter what we want to see in the results window. We'll come back to audio files later, but I want to focus initially on MIDI files and MIDI loops. As soon as I select them, the filtered results change to reflect all of the MIDI content. I'm selecting a master key inside of this Cubase project, so my project's now in F. Now everything inside of the media bay can be tagged with keys and tempos, which means that the media bay knows what key it was in, and now it can transpose it to the key I want to hear it in. I can also automatically play these files and then link playback to the chord track. Now this is where the integration starts to get pretty cool. I'm going to go down and add chord pads. So I've got a bank of pads which have got interchangeable chords on them. I'm also going to go up and add a chord track. I can now start using the chord track to drag and drop these interchangeable chords up into my project. So let's build a very simple four bar phrase. Now we don't have to stick to these chords that we're choosing. This is just an initial scratch idea. At any point in time, we can go through and we can change them. Even the best musicians struggle to come up with chord progressions sometimes. You might have a mental blank, or you might just find that all your music sounds the same. So now you can use the chord assistant, the proximity, and the circle of fifths to find some handy suggestions from your chord progression. And it's everything from basic through to jazz, through to advanced and well, quite complicated chord progressions. I'm scrolling through the MIDI loops and MIDI patterns inside of the media bay. There's so many of them that cover different genres and different instruments. I'll try and find something that I like. And when I find something that I like, I drag and drop it over into my project window. Now that it's in my project window, I can hit play and it's gonna follow exactly the chord track.
You might listen back and think, well, that D minor doesn't sound quite right. So let's change it to a sus4. And that's reflected straight away in the project. Now that I've got the initial idea down, I can start working with some color or trying to find some other instruments that I think is gonna complement that four bar phrase. So I'm gonna start with drums. So I drag it over and that beat's loaded in, but it's also loaded the instrument in. So as I'm dragging and dropping, Cubase is adding new instruments to the project. I think this could do with some sort of hook or riff. So I'm gonna go through and try and find some sort of synth lead sound and that'll work. So you can hear how that sounded there and now it sounds completely different because it's matched to the chord track. I think it needs some bass, so let's find some bass and drag that across. And then I think that synth lead could probably start on bar three, just to give some dynamic space in the first two bars. Let's listen to that. It's important to note at this stage that these MIDI loops and MIDI files are not just MIDI information. Our developers have spent a lot of time trying to match these different MIDI parts to sounds and instruments inside of Cubase. When I open the instrument on the first track, you'll see that a preset's loaded inside of Hellion Sonic SC2. We can start using the software instrument's parameters to manipulate the sound and make it our own. Remember, we've already made this MIDI file our own by adding our own chords inside of the chord track. The original MIDI file was completely different before we dragged it into the project. Chord track changed the chords to fit our chords. Now we're doing the same thing with sound. We're taking the sound that the engineers have given us and we're changing it so that it's our own. Once we've changed it, we can save it as a preset and recall it at any point in time in the future via the media bay. The media bay goes further than just a MIDI file and a software instrument. When we click on the E button, you'll see that there's also been four inserts added over the top of the software instrument and an EQ setting. We can stick with the suggested inserts or we can go into the inserts own presets and find other presets to suit us. Alternatively, we can just change the parameters and further develop our own tone. Let's move to the second track and open up the instrument. It's Groove Agent SE4. Now previously, I dragged a MIDI drum file straight over into the project and it automatically loaded this instrument. I like this patch, but perhaps I'm after a different kick drum. So I've gone back to my media bay and I'm gonna select audio files, go up to the search window and type in kick. Now I can see all of the kick drums in my media bay. So in my search results, it's not just one shot kick drums. There are some beats. So I'm gonna go up to the subcategory and just select kick drum, which will refine the filter results even further. Now in my filter results, I should only have one shot kick drums and that's what I want. So I'm gonna go over to my instrument and reset the pad. So this is removing the original kick drum. And now I go over and find the kick drum that I want and simply drag and drop it straight over into Groove Agent SE4. This takes Media Bay integration to a new level because now I'm actually building my own instrument. I can build my own entire drum set using this technique. If I'd recorded live drums, I could use this instrument and the Media Bay to build myself a whole drum set for drum replacement or even just merging sounds with the recorded drum sound. Once I've found the sounds that I want to use in the media bay, and I've taken them and dragged them into Groove Agent SE4, I can use the parameters again inside of Groove Agent SE4 to further shape and design my own tone. I can start using a filter, or distortion, or EQ, or effects, or any number of parameters inside the instrument. I can then save, recall, or change my kit at any point in time using the media bay. I'm just going to go into channel strip and load a preset up, apply that preset and see how it sounds. And it's changed the tone of my sound. Let's move on and go down to the bass track and load up the instrument. Now this instrument is Retrolog 2, so it's a new instrument inside of Cubase Pro 8.5. All I'm going to do is go up to the presets, type in bass and start previewing some different bass sounds. So that's one approach to creating music inside the media bay in Cubase Pro 8.5. In the next media bay video, we'll look at sourcing and using loops to create even more content inside of Cubase Pro 8.5.